Good evening to you all. Sakum al Bukhair. In the next lecture, we'll start. In the next lecture, we'll start. In the next lecture, Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today in ETAR. Uh, first of all, today I can't open the camera. I had an operation this week, so I apologize for that. Uh, also, I want to thank for joining us in uh, YouTube as well. Today, as uh, a weekly uh, ETAR webinar, we have a new uh, or another uh, uh, speaker. Our keynote speaker is Dr. Mohammed. Uh, Mohammed works as an associate professor at the American University of Kuwait. He has worked in the field of media and the translation for over 30 years. His publications include TV translation, identity crisis and globalization and the effect of children TV cartoon translation on education. During the Iraq invasion of Kuwait, he has established a media center in Wales, Cardiff, which is in the United Kingdom. Also, he's currently associated with the advancement of women issues and empowerment in Kuwait. He taught many courses in the American University of Kuwait, such as the principle of advertising, the principle of public relation, media translation, independent study, broadcast journalism, copywriting for advertising, writing for mass media, independent study advertising cam uh, campaign, documentary production and introduction to, uh, uh, to education, technology, and media translation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mohammed Akbar, for accepting uh, my invitation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before we start, 
Yeah, sorry, just a minute. Before we start, just I want to uh, to ask our audience if you have any question. Inshallah, the questions it will be after uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Muhammad presentation. You have two type to ask uh, Dr. Muhammad your question. Uh, you can by uh, type your question in Q and A below the screen, or you can uh, raise your hand and uh, we can go one by one to ask uh, our you know, to speak our question. Please, please don't type your question in the chat because the chat is keep rolling. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Professor, for accepting my invitation and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. It's my pleasure actually to be invited and have a chance to interact with you regarding, you know, media and communications and mainly it's media translation. You see, uh, talking on the social media, just talking and chatting, it's a little bit kind of, sometimes you feel it's boring. So what I have done actually, you know, through, you know, my research, you know, my involvement with my students, my classes, you know, uh, I give them projects. And, and images of translation, how images playing a role in translation. This is actually, it's very important now. This is our mainly want to talk about this issue. Now, uh, see, I'm going to show you some of my students, you know, assignments, videos. And in every video, I will tell you how students been developing the images of translation or how, you know, developing the images in translation. How, how is, you know, the images, how are the images are crucial in translation? Is it efficient, not efficient? I'm going to talk about this in general. You see my years of, of working in the field of translation, you know, if we go a little back in the history, uh, you know, after the invasion, you know, uh, the translation department at Kuwait TV has been demolished. I came and assume I have, I have about 37 years experience of my life in the field of media media and communication and mainly translation. So I established the whole translation department. I started finding equipment, new equipment like BBC, subtitling, things. So you see, I, first of all, I, want, I would like to share with you, you know, uh, some students' assignments in, in dubbing and subtitling. After all these years of, of field of working in the media and translation at Kuwait TV, I said, why I don't change that area into academic field to be more academic to to benefit the students academically how we can focus or shift the light in translation so uh, first of all as you know in translation we have subtitling subtitling we are using words in translation we translate source language into another language using subtitling subtitling this, this advantage of subtitling, I'm going to show you one, some little videos of my students done subtitling. Subtitling actually, you know, have a lot of, lot of things you have to follow. It's have its own boundaries, restrictions, disadvantages. Subtitling, you have to follow eight words in subtitling. You cannot, if you, if you because three words equals one second. You can't, you don't have, you cannot make that subtitling more than five seconds. So now in subtitling, you have to follow uh, rules that not than more more than nine words or eight words. If you translate more than that nine words or eight words maximum max eight, you might lose. You cannot track keep track of translation. You cannot you know understand the movie by itself. So you might lose a scene. So this one issue we have an issue here. Another issue is now a translation issue. A school of translation. A lot of people, they believe Arabism, we still keep using the same, you know, words in translation as, as it's, you know, we change it to Arabism, which we should use, you know, like, for example, uh, you know, for example, uh, you know, uh, for example, sandwich, sandwich, it's originally, you know, it's an English word, or Western word. Okay, like, for example, so this is, if you want to translate it into Arabic, for example, you see, it's, it's complicated. So now there are many issues, many schools, which school we have to follow. But I believe 
modern school, we have to use the word as it is, as is source. It's or how it's been, you know, originated from where it's source, like in English, like for example, garage, we don't say mer up, we say garage. This one thing. Now, then I found out, uh, I moved on to dubbing. Let me just let me show you, please. Uh, one of my, you know, some students, uh, what have done in, in, uh, in translation, okay, in subtitling. Then I move into dubbing. Then I move to the images of translation, how images has played a very important role in translation. Now, let me show you. I have here some of my students, uh, you know, it's, it's only one minute. I'm not, going, I'm not going to show long videos for you. It's only you know, a minute, not to feel boring. And we, we just have to interact. It's better, okay? I'm going now to show you. I'm going to share the screen with you. Okay. Share the screen with you and show you, you know, students. Okay, this is, I teach students subtitling. What you see is subtitling is, uh, you know, plays more role in translation, has more power, or it's, uh, uh, you know, or has more, uh, images has more power in translation. Let's see now, this is subtitle here, using subtitling. You see now here in subtitling, you see sometimes you have to be very careful with the wordings. You know, you have to put, minimize it to eight words because if it's longer, you might lose the scene. And this one of the things is very important, subtitling translation. You see now here, guys, again, you see the long subtitling, it might affect the translation. It's fine sometimes to feel difficult. But because it's a little bit longer, it's fine. Okay, now we move on into, uh, you see, a, a, a language of translation. You see, in subtitling, there are, it's, 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 it's westernization. It might get into a lot of issues affecting language. Uh, you know, it's uh, cheaper to do subtitling now. Let's just go back now to see dubbing. How is dubbing is effective in translation? It has the same, you know, playing the same role or not. So let's now show you, uh, you know, some, some uh, one, uh, for example, I will show you now uh, student, students dubbing. Just let me share the screen with you now. Okay. This is, uh, you see, I also, in my classes, I teach them subtitling, how to translate from textual subtitling from the text, and dubbing. The dubbing, it's audio translation. They have to listen to the film, and they translate, and they use they use dubbing. And that is, uh, students uh, interact too much with, with, the, with, with, when they use their audio, the sound, they become like an actor. They, they, they act more. They feel fun. They feel more attached to that video. So translation now moving from a textual subtitling into the audio, audio translation using their voices. 
and translating and putting their audios and they can you know you know they have a long lot of leeway to to act to talk to speak okay for example here I, they can use all languages they can use a Kuwaiti accent Arabic classical English I give them a chance to interact with translation to 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 get more attached to the to the to the you know even emotionally نروح نتعشى ونتعرف على بعض احنا بنروح الجمعية ممتاز نروح كلنا سوا مع بعض وعندهم عروض ما عندك مشكلة لا لا ما عندي مشكلة نروح نتعرف على بعض أكثر حبيت الفكرة يلا خلنا نروح وياه لا لا ما أبي أروح روح أنت وياه أنا بروح تعال تعال معي <تصفيق> So now, as you saw, students' voices, they became an actor or actresses. They can, you know, interact. They create new things in themselves through translation. So we have subtitling and we have the dubbing, the audio translation. Now move on to, on to images of translation. So how, you know, how we can use images in translation, you know, how it's, you know, how, how playing a very important role, you know. You know, translating words, you see, uh, or text, you know, uh, into different languages has been happening over since, you know, first Bible was translated. So even Quran been translated, you're the Bible, biblical time, everything is, it's been there. But how, but however, translation has always been associated with conversion of language, but never through pictures. And this is the, the new theory now. We're going to experience a new theory and how we're going to, you know, to, uh, to, to try to try to how see images. Is it powerful in translation? How it plays a role? How we can, you know, uh, apply or utilize it, uh, images? And as you see, guys, now, uh, the history of a human communication has progressed through three distinct phases, oral text and recently image communication or images of translation. We have example now, many examples now recently, you know, uh, been using images in cartoons, they've been using images. We have, uh, have, we have a good example. The theory of visual communication as a cross between visual communications and information system where one is able to create or capture images that are capable of generating meaning and image translation into general consensus to the audience. So I'm trying like, for example, one image, you might translate that image into many meanings emotionally. One picture, one image in translation, you can, you know, goes into many meanings. To create an image that is capable of translation, it has to evoke or trigger the audience's emotions. Okay, so you have to be, be very, 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 you know, it's, it's not easy because in images, emotionally have to be, you know, provoke their, you know, their emotions, nationalism, sentiments, you know, many things. It's like, for example, we have, i give you a good example. If you know Najil Ali, the cartoonist, okay, he was to explain the proposed idea further, I'm going to illustrate the power of translation of images through famous Palestinian, you know, character, Hanbala. You know all Hanbala. Hanbala is, uh, uh, you know, uh, created by uh, Najil Ali, cartoonist. And uh, that cartoonist, whenever he put Hanbala, it, it gives, gives the power of translation of many words, many meanings, politically, emotionally. And this is one of the reasons that he lost his life. They assassinated him because it was very powerful, sending a strong message. Najin Ali wrote, the child Hamdala is my signature. Everyone asked me about him wherever I go. I gave birth to his child in the Gulf and I presented him to the people. His name is Hamdala 
and he has promised the people that he will remain true to himself. And I drew him as a child who is not beautiful. His hair is like the hair of a hedgehog who uses his thorns as a weapon. So you see, Hamdullah is not a fat, happy, relaxed, or pampered child. He is barefooted like a refugee camp children. And he is an icon that protects me from making mistakes. See, this is, even though he is rough, his, he smells of, as he smells amber, amber, and his hands are clasped behind his back as sign of rejection at a time when solutions are presented to, to, uh, to, to, the, to us, to them by the Americans. And this is a good example how will images plays a role in, 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 in giving strong messages. It's very important, Zane. Uh, sorry. So now the images translate into memories and emotions for Bosnians also. When they show that of, of you know, their camp, showing the camp, it reminds them of the pain they have endured in the past. And it is an emblem of them there to never forget and to always move on stronger. So this is, an, in general, of, of, of the power of images in translation, how it has the power. I'm going now. You see, after you see, after coming to my, you know, uh, uh, after working with my students and subtitling, dubbing, I said, why don't start with a new theory using images in translation? I'm going to show you my students' work, and I'm going to discuss with you what are the methods, methodology of 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 using images in translation. In translation, is that it's, it's powerful? Is that helps? Is that good for, for example, now for the, you know, schools now, we have our children, their memory is really exhausted with many, many, you know, using the social media, and it's, it's always they feel, you know, you know, feel uh, uh, not happy with writings. So it's better to teach them how to do images and to tell a story to translate through the images, showing the images, using their hands, instead of just, you know, narrating things to them. And that's feel, they feel it's their you know, learning by heart. So I'm going to show you guys, share with you some of my, you know, some of the students' uh, work they have done. And I can go through one by one, show you what are the techniques. And by the way, before I start, I give them the techniques how to film these images. What are the type of images they are using? Now, uh, I'm going to show you some of my students' work. And I share with you the screen. I started first, always I try to, you know, uh, be kind of emotional to my students. I started, you know, uh, tell them to do a drawings or a story about, about the mother, you know, about mother, familyhood. You know, this is very important. This is now done by students. Please share with me. A mother's story. See now here images of translation, they can use music, they can comment, and they can use their voice to interact and they draw. They can draw the images they want. Once upon a time, a boy asked his mother to give him an amount of money without his dad's knowledge after he had spent his weekly allowance. However, she refused only because she knows he'll spend it on video games and candy he loves. The son was very angered by the situation. In 
the evening, when his mother was in the kitchen preparing dinner, he approached her and handed her a paper which he had already written a while ago. After his mother dried her hands, she held the paper and read what was written. The paper read, Price for cleaning my room, 40 KD. The price for going to the market instead of you, 40 KD. The price of playing with my little brother, 30 KD. The price of helping you clean the house, 20 KD. The price of getting straight A's, 70 KD. All this adds up to a total of 200 KD. Pay me now while I'm still working. The mother glanced at her son who was standing right next to her and with a tender smile she grabbed a pen, turned the paper over and began writing. The price of the nine months I carried you and me. The money of the whole milk I fed you in the first 20 months. Priceless. The price of all the nights I stayed beside you when you were sick. Priceless. The price for all the fatigue and tears you caused me all these years. The price of all the nights I was afraid and worried about you. The price of all the food and the toys and the clothes I spent on you till this day. My son, when you add all this together, the price for my love for you is priceless. When the son read what was written by his mother, his eyes began to tear up. He looked at her and said, Mother, please forgive me. I love you so much. He then took a pen and wrote in a large font, I can never repay you. Be giving and not needy, especially when it comes to your parents. There's so much more in this world that you can give to them besides money. See guys, this is an example how students interacted using images and translation. Using four senses is very important in, in, in communication when you communicate. The music, her audio voice, writing, and drawing. And really, when students really interact with that thing, and the topic itself is very emotional, we are able to send a message through that, these images. This is one kind of you know, uh, using images, drawings, live, talking, speaking, and music. We have another kind, another type of, of using images in translation. I will show you another type. And we can see, see, this is another one, another type.
There's another type. If a student cannot draw, if a student feels feel himself is, uh, needs time. So what is in, in this case, he will do the images and put them with the music and makes it easier for him. And this another way he can tell a story, uh, you know, real something medical, emotional, and you are using it through. Uh, so you can use, you know, uh, images and that, 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 you know, that uh, translation. So it's very important, very important that you can use images. So we have different method methodology in using the images. And this is very important. You know, this is very important that, you know, uh, for students' imagination, vision will become better and they can attach and they can feel their hands on. And instead of just listening to lecture, instead of just, you know, uh, you know, uh, just writing. And this is it's in a bit, it's better way of, of using you know, translation of images. Professor, we can't see anything in our screen. Yeah, okay, okay. No problem. Sharing the screen. Sorry, yeah, yeah I, I forgot. Sorry. Thank you for reminding me. You see this? Another, another style, another methodology of using images and translation. Diagnosed with advanced testicular cancer at the age of 25. Doctors gave Lance Armstrong less than a 40% chance of recovery. Tumors were discovered in his lungs and stomach along with multiple lesions on the brain. His biking career was over, or so everyone thought. But no one counted in the indomitable belief Armstrong had in himself and the lessons which his mother, Linda Walling, had taught him. One of the first things that he did was to acknowledge the disease that had captured him and its talents and learn everything he could about it. He devoured books, resources and found help in support groups with people going through similar difficulties. Lance sought strength in three things his mother had instilled in him. Make every obstacle an opportunity. Always work hard and good things will happen. And don't believe it when other people say you can't. His first comeback after beating cancer was not a success and he finished 14th in the race. He even thought about retirement but constant support from his fiance, mother and buddy Chris Carmichael soon had him training for his next race in the Appalachians. He returned from his training, a transformed man and never let the constant difficulties plow him down again. True. The doping scandals have destroyed Lance's reputation as a professional biker, but one cannot but admire his sheer willpower and dedication through which he turned the odds in his favor at a time when everyone thought his life was over. Okay, this is another type of using images ready been painted or drawn. You see, I'm using different methodology for the students to interact, to learn more. We have, we have another type of, of also another methodology of using images translation. I can show you more and more and more, but I will, because of the time limit, I try to, you know, to show what I can. I mean, it's not all, but I will try to show my best. You see now this another 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 method of using the images translation. How the students can use Im images and instead of using, you know, a uh, different met method, I will show you now, guys. Is yeah. Safe place. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Jack. You see now here another method. They can use real, real tool, real game, real toys and use them in images of translation instead of just drawings. They can use them and video them and show them to the student and learn from it. 
or ask the student to to use that idea and they draw it or they practice it. This another method. He was homeschooled his entire life. Due to that, Jack didn't have anyone to talk to. His only friends were his toys and action figures. And his favorite action figure was Superman. One day, Jack was playing with his toys. And as he watched the caricature of his father fly away and slam against the door, he hoped one day Superman will save him or one day he will overcome his fears and be his own Superman. But it would be apparent that today was not any different as he hears the sudden shutting of the door. Jack peered open his door only to peek witness at the sight of the alcoholic man that should have been his only hero. The little boy knew as per the routine he had to protect himself. He had to exhaust all his options and keep his father out of his room. Jack had to hide somewhere and it had to be quick. But it was to no avail. The little boy knew then that today was not the day he would become his own Superman. Moral of the story, people need to learn that their actions affect other people. So be careful what you say and do. It's not always just about you. You see this another way, they can use messages, they can use go to psychology issues. There's another way of also using images you know i have also i will show you one more and we'll stop and we'll have open discussion about this i can talk more about go and more into detail about uh, using images in translation we have you see there is another way of also using their hands instead of just paintings okay This another another way, another method of using images in translation. What is a friend? A friend will let you win sometimes. Yay, I won, I won, I won. Woohoo! Woohoo, woohoo, woohoo. A friend will remember your birthday. Happy birthday, thank you, yay! Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. A friend is someone you can be sad with. <laughs> A friend is fun to be with. A friend will pick you up when you're down. Do, 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 do. Oh, here, I'll help you. Thanks. <laughs> so no one told you that was gonna be this way. Your job's a joke, you broke. Your love lasts to your way. You see, this is uh, we have more, more. Well, I want to see. We cannot. It's not a stop. I have plenty of videos. I show you students how they used images translation. Some of them they used real apples to express themselves. It's it's a chance for them to express themselves, them thoughts, and it's it's uh, it's a good. You know, uh, it's it's very good that they can move their cognitive. They can go deep into. You know, imagination, vision, and create things. Or, you know, in, in images, you can do a lot of things you cannot do in the real action or real reality. And that helps translation to, you know, even for uh, students now. We can use this in our curriculum at, at schools, you know, starting teaching them images, how to write through images, use images instead of just writing homeworks, you know. You see now, uh, 
طبعا ان ان كونكلوجن ان كونكلوجن يو سي جايز وي هاف سي اباوت الايمجز اتس 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 يو نو وي فايند اوت ان اتس اتس فيري امبورتنت اند هاز فيري امبورتنت رول ان ترانسليشن اند اتس ريلي فيري افكتيف اند ات كان سند ا سترونج مسجز يو نو فور ذا فيرك فور اكزامبل فور ذا فور ذا فيرست يو نو اي فيديو اي شوود يو اباوت ماذر ماذر هود You know, the students conducted a five-minute video to portray their powerful images. It's an illustration of mother's love. The student kept on drawing images that followed a storyline that tells the tale of a mother and her child. The student, you know, students enjoyed watching that video. They said they were really liked it and enjoyed it when I asked my students. This video felt extremely sentimental. All of the emo these emotions were... triggered by the power of images and how they would how they could give out more meaning than words you see this images gives more meaning than words words might die but in in in, in gives more meaning the students were able to conclude with united meaning which was mother's love to her children is powerful and priceless And it's very important in the and in, in this time of our life, and this in this new generation, it's very important to use kind of these images. You know, it's very important. In this project, the students were able to interact with with the display images and activate their critical thinking process. Through one picture, they were able to extract multi multiple and more meaningful meanings, rather than what a sentence or paragraph will tell them. They saw it by their eyes. They interacted with the images. You see another, for example, I uh, and, 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 and the third, some, I showed you one of the projects. Uh, the students created storyline that focuses on the importance of, of friendship. I just showed you about friendship, how they used fingers, how they created, how, you know, make them happy and interact. Uh, you see in this project, the students created uh, a storyline that focuses on the importance of friendship and what true friends should be like with the use of their index fingers. They, they use short titles on top of after every scene and used their index fingers to tell the story. The students found this technique very humorous and suited them friendship. Again, similar to the previous project, the students were able to convey warm and sentimental messages about the true essence of friendship. Friendship. The feedback for this project was very successful and inspired more by students. You see now, uh, now if we, I mean, I have one minute left, 45 minutes as it's my presentation. Now, if you go back to Quran, the Holy Quran, You see, where do you think is more important laying in the Quran, Holy Quran? The words or the images where God talk about images, depicting the doomsday, depicting, you know, emotional things in Quran, how images also been in Quran. Where do you think the power stands more when you read or when you, when you, you know, visualize things mentioned by the Holy God, the, the great Almighty God talking about it, the, the doomsday, describing it to us, yeah, images of it, images of, of things like, you know, talking about how zebra run away, running away from a lion, showing images. So in Quran, been using a lot of images. So the images also, when you imagine, you remember that images, it's very powerful. So images, it has... They are really play a very important role in translation. And I think it's, it's about time to use them in our school curriculum for our children. And uh, thank you very much. This is my, I think time is over, 45 seconds, minutes. If you have any question, please um, you know, feel free to ask me. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Mohammed, for your uh, very interesting, useful, Uh, webinar actually I really uh, like it I like the creative ideas by your students uh, different style different type and really remind me as well in my uh, lectures 
the same thing, but I translate the English to English pictures. To, for example, explain definitions of something in accounting. Uh, explain some principles of uh, something in accounting as well. So yeah, that's like they said, uh, a picture, it's about 1,000 words. So um, um, I really uh, agree uh, with you and also like the ideas and what about Quran, yes, like that's why they did movies and series about uh, other, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, others that make the stories real and also not just uh, uh, me and you or other adults, also the children, they can understand it more and understand it uh, well, especially the details of the stories. Uh, thank you so much, uh, professors. As if anyone have any question, please uh, raise your hand and we can go one by one. Uh, ask uh, Professor Muhammad. Uh, Yahya? Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello, I'm there. I'm listening. Yeah, I'm, I can hear you. Please uh, go ahead, Mr. Yahya. I'm very happy to join you in this webinar. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your cooperation and your help. Uh, I, I just want to say something about um, uh, as far as um, using, for example, translation in learning the language. I, I'm, I'm personally against using translation in, uh, in, in uh, learning a new uh, language using the mother tongue. But I prefer the idea of the idea of mentioned that using uh, images as a form of translation in learning the second language instead of uh, using uh, another, another language to, to uh, explain uh, the new language or using the mother tongue in order to explain the, the new language, it's preferable and it's also useful, as you mentioned, to use images. And this is the, the, the way to get rid of an, uh, uh, using a new language in, in order to learn uh, something like uh, English or an, any other language. Yeah, okay. You know, uh, are, are you, you finished, Mr. Yahya? Yeah, that's all. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, you see, you, I'm, I'm, I'm also, I, you know, in a way, I agree what we are saying because, uh, you see, uh, now, uh, because of identity crisis, and a lot of, uh, you know, countries, they feel now, uh, you know, using, learning uh, Western language, for example, Americanization, it's intrusion of, of their identity like a Muslim's identity or Arab's identity. So they believe now, uh, um, it's, they believe more into dubbing or images. So they believe in the, that in the dubbing, uh, it's kind of minimize of, of, you know, creating identity crisis or intrusion into our culture. Because you see these kind of uses of languages might intrusion into our culture. It's foreignization, it's Westernization. So also they believe it's very important that we can use images in our way and uh, not using uh, westernization, uh, you know, like subtitling. So a lot of these countries, for example, I'll give an example, France, French, they are, oh, they are pro-dubbing. Uh, they don't want, they feel, they feel they want, they want to use the language. But, uh, you know, this is one of the things you are agree with you. So images now, it's very important, Mr. Yahya, because now, uh, you know, the social media and interacting with all the social media issue, it's better teach our children drawings and express them feelings through images. And, and uh, we can translate their feelings through images. Teach them in the classroom using images and instead of just writing. And will, they will be very creative. And in human communication, images important, uh, plays a very important role in human communication. The artists, see, see the artists, you see the pharaohs, how they used very, very powerful images in, 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 in translating their life, their, their, you know, the epic of their life, the daily life story through images. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, that's why, that's why, for example, the Mona Lisa painting has lived more than any other book. Yeah. With higher value. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. Thank you, uh, Yahya. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Uh, any other questions? Anyone had another question? Uh, Doctor, uh, Doctor Mohammed, uh, we have a question in the Q and A. Is uh, Kalila and uh, Dimna related to images of a translation? Yeah, you see, Kalila and Dimna. If you, it's 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 it will be related if you use them, use their images into with the music and storytelling. It might, but if you just leave them as it, it will not be. For example, as we saw. We can use them, you know, use them in, in creating a video and use them as an image of translation, but we have to translate them because you see it's in Arabic. So if you tell them in English and you draw, it will be part of images of translation, yes. You have to have to go through process. You know, have to go through process. You have to, you know, there is a guideline how you use them, to, to use them as, as a image of translation. Yeah, it, it is possible, it's doable, yeah. Thank you, Manar. Uh, professor, uh, what is the, um, you know, the easiest way or the best way to, let's say, the, the best way to deliver your message via images? Which is the best way? You know, you show, you show us a sample of different examples, but from your experience, yeah. which one right. is the best yeah. one? Yeah. The best way of, of uh, you know, you know, uh, the best way is, is when you draw, when you draw the images and you you put music and you you, you speak with it, you know, you, you use four senses. It gives a stronger message, an easier way. When you draw and use your voice, talking, speaking, and translating, and using the image and will be, will be more interactive. But if you show a plain images, they might, but they might not interact. But when you show your hands on working, drawing, and writing, it will give more powerful and it's it's better way. But if you want to give them an easy way, because you have people with special needs, by the way, huh? If you have people with special needs, it's better to put just images, you know, you know, put images, stick images. You have these two ways now. I hope I answered your question, Dr. Ahmed. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you Yara. Uh, also, we have a question from Yara. Uh, she said, uh, could, uh, could you, Professor Mohammed, share any articles or papers you have related to the topic? Yeah, I have actually now, I have a, a chapter. Okay, so uh, I have a chapter on, on, uh, on images of translation. I will send you a copy. To read about it, if you like. Oh, I have. I'm working in a chapter. Yeah. From Yara, so remember. Yahya, over. Have another question? Yes, Yahya. Yeah. Uh, Joining the the previous question, I, I just want to ask Mr. Muhammad if uh, there are some references. Uh, about um, using uh, images in translation, he can uh, mention, he can uh, show us so that we can get inspired. Yeah, you see now what I have, uh, you see, I done a research paper. I will send it to Dr. Uh, Ahmed and he will send it to you and with all references, you can find it there. Thank you very much. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, full of references, have plenty of references you can use and look at it and you can use them. Uh, can, we, can we get them th through our emails uh, if possible? Yeah, yeah, I will send him. Uh, I think Dr. Ahmed, uh, he has it, and he will send it to you. Thank you very much. You're an angel. No problem. No problem. He will send you the references. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you, Yahya. Uh, professor, I noticed that you, you moved to United Kingdom uh, with, in, uh, in Iraq period, in the war. So uh, can, you, can you tell us about uh, the, the images that you did it or maybe the, uh, I think you did something for Kuwait there or talk about it. If you can tell us about it, please. Yeah, you see during uh, the invasion I was, you see, I worked about, I have a long experience, about 37 years of my life. I worked in the field media and communication. You see, I was in charge of English news department. Then I, after what I did my master's degree, 
uh, you know, I, I was in charge of, you know, uh, you know, translation department. I actually did translated 3,000 movies so far. I did a lot of translation. I established translation from, I did, you know, you know, different departments for dubbing everything. So during, before the invasion, I was in a, they did send me to, a, to attend, uh, you know, a, a seminar and a course for three months, how to develop and to improve English news or news in general. So I was there during, uh, you know, invasion 1990. So uh, during my course, the invasion happened. Iraq, you know, invaded Kuwait. Actually, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. And, uh, you know, because of my long experience in the field of media and communication, the Kuwait embassy asked me, you know, to join and to start, you know, working with them. I was at that time in Cardiff, Wales. My seminar or my course was in Cardiff, Wales. And what happened actually, so I said, I, why don't establish a media center in Wales, Cardiff? Cardiff is about 4, 4 million huh? population, 4 million. So uh, I talked to them, they give me a budget. I established a place, you know, a house, and I start working campaigning from there. One of the things that I did, I did, you know, I worked with the BBC and there I worked with them. And I produced documentaries about the invasion. And, uh, you know, we were campaigning and the uh, Welsh was so kind. They were very helpful. And we did a lot of march. I took them and it was uh, one of the funny things happened to us. You know, I told the Welsh, you know, people, they said, uh, they said, we are willing to support you and go with you to London, to Trafalgar Square to do this demonstration against, you know, Saddam and that time. Of, but very, very, uh, you know, it was very tense, very tense moment that time for us as a Kuwaiti. We lost our country and occupied by Saddam. So uh, Iraq, you know, the Welsh told me, I will go with you in the bus, four buses. But they told me, you know, uh, we are, uh, but one thing, we need to eat kebab. I said, don't worry, I'll buy, <laughs> I ordered kebab. So I put kebab for them in the road and we went. It was very helpful. And also I did documentaries with, for Channel 4 and for the, you know, for uh, about an invasion and showing how, sufferings of equity so that is the whole thing that and we worked we did campaign i worked with the bbc we did a lot of shooting filming about kuwaitis we went to houses where the you know uh, a lot of british they were hostages when we were released by saddam and they show us how they were in height they were wearing kuwaiti dress painting black their faces like you know to hide because they were so so white and this is a long, you know, experience of filming and news report in journalism. So you see now, in my air expertise is not only translation. I am I have a long, good experience in advertising, broadcast journalism, and translation. Translation. I've been moved, translating a lot of movies, audio translation, and all, all. It's, I have long experience, and this is my whole story about where, what I have done in, in Wales and Cardiff. Uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, your experience, Professor, in this uh, special uh, period. Uh, professor, as you said, you are expert in advertisement as well. Nowadays, you see many, many, uh, you know, advertisement coming up, especially during Ramadan. Uh, every company is, and, you know, they, need, they want to do something to uh, let people to watch this advertisement. Restaurants, companies, banks, and others. Which one of all advertisement that's happened nowadays, it's, you know, interact you or something new, creative idea as your experience? Yeah. Okay. I have also a question from the uh, chat, Q Q and answer questions and answers. Okay. You see, uh, you see the trend is changing in advertising. Trend is changing. You know, uh, as you know, 60% of our population, the new generation, you have to follow what they want, they like. Now, mostly it's, uh, now, if you see most of the ads advertising, they use songs, uh, you know, fast trend, you know, rap, mostly they what they use now. But if you go into uh, French way, abstract, uh, no, no words, they don't like it now. They want to be interactive, jump around, dance, uh, fast music, rap, 
and this is what the new trend is in, in advertising. See, now uh, you see there are many schools in advertising. You know, uh, now if we talk about you know uh, schools in Egypt, for example, in Arab world, Egypt, you know, they love, they like to have always even the chocolate. They make songs. They, they give a lot of songs. They like songs. They like songs, and they like. You know, the billboards, they are very good in billboards. They use even, uh, you know, the slang language in billboards. Now, uh, in, in, in the social media, you don't have your space for advertising. You have, you know, only 15 seconds for Instagram. And, so you cannot, you don't have too much leeway. But in some social media where you can use advertising, you know, uh, mostly what you watch now, we watch even, even MP, MBK Bank, you know, Zane, all, they are changing the two trend. All of a sudden you walk to avenues and you see the dancing and jumping and making movement, body language. And this is the new trend they like now, the new generation. They, they, do, they don't want to go to this traditional way of advertising, music and showing the product, focus close up on the products. You see there are 16 techniques of, of, of producing, for producing, you know, uh, advertising, 16 techniques. The mostly they like, they like, you know, what they call it slice of life uh, technique in advertising. They like to show uh, emotional, show story, show, show, you know, interaction. They don't like to show, for example, rotoscope of advertising. Rotoscope means, you know, action with, you know, action with cartoons. They don't like it like before. Show you know, and like Superman eating sandwich or a child, they don't like it. They like slice of life, they like action, and they like to see that brand is working. And they, sh they want to see that the brand is make them happy. They jump with the brand, they interact. They feel that they are happy, they are joyful. They don't want to see sad and things like that. You know, this is uh, what is working now in advertising mostly. I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you, Professor. We have a question from uh, Maryam. Sometimes in literal, in literal translation, we struggle to translate some uh, something, whether it's saying jokes or sarcasm. Um, How do we offset or solve that? You see, uh, in translation, when we translate, for example, Indian movie, it's very hard to translate songs. It's not easy because you never can get a connotation, a real connotation of that song. It's very hard. Or unless that movie, uh, that song, it's related to the to the to the heart of the movie, to the to the full movie. You see, uh, you know, the hardest way of translating it's it's humor. Why? Because the humor. It differs from a culture to culture. You know, jokes, for example, as you mentioned. The jokes, uh, you, you know, uh, different culture, they cannot take the, you know, the, yeah? You want a question? Anything? You want to add up anything? Any comments? Yeah. You see, for example, the jokes. You know, jokes, they don't perceive jokes. Yes. What? Excuse me? Yes, yes, Bob. Yeah. Sorry. You see, jokes, you are perceiving jokes a uh, different way from different culture. For example, the Arabs in general, they cannot just laugh for any jokes, simple joke. The British, the Westerns, slice jokes, they might laugh, make them laugh. So to translate a joke into translation is not easy. It's not easy to translate. You try, but to get the connotation, to get the real meaning is very hard. You see, we in, in translation, we do literally translation for two things. For Quranic verses, we cannot change it. Even I think, I remember we had a big problem when one because we follow the Quran. Exactly, we take it from the Quran. And the Quranic verses are all translation. We had the problem, big problem during the translation. For example, in Arabic, we say, in Quran, if you if you understand, maybe read Arabic or understand Arabic. Rabbi Shrahli Sadri. It was a speech by his honest Emir, you know. 
الله يرحمه الشيخ صباح and uh, it was in Quranic translation literally we cannot change it was oh God enlarge my breast but the breast at all you know uh, you know language that era breast for men and women but in this era this new generation it means something else and you see this is one thing we also fall problems in translation this is literally translation I'm talking about we can only translate speech of for the for example the president of the country or Quranic verses but other or other than that you have the right you can you know you can change the translation around even jokes you can't change it around but you have to get to the meaning you know when I give my students assignments 10 10 ways of translation 10 ways 10 15 ways of translation but the main thing is you get the meaning the right meaning this is the most important thing you do yes you, indeed you can do uh, you know translate jokes but i'm not i'm not sure that you make them laugh because uh, jokes differs from a culture to a culture how to perceive jokes how to make them laugh okay i hope i understand i, I answer the question Yes, Professor, and we have another question from Yahya. How can ethics govern the image? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, I have an example, Guantanamo. Guantanamo, how will Guantanamo uh, close the jail? Because of images translation. They made a cartoon of Guantanamo, sufferings of one, okay? And, uh, and uh, it was had a big impact and the public opinion words globally and they one of the reasons that caused you know uh, affected uh, people's uh, you know uh, attitudes and public opinion you know you see uh, you see mr yahya uh, censorship it differs from a country to a country maybe i don't know if you are from i think from turkey from turkey yahya you see censorship in, in your country in my country, totally different. So a kiss in my country in Kuwait, kissing, kissing, Kuwaiti government or Kuwaiti TV, they censor that. So you have to be careful according to any country's censorship law. Now, you see, if we are using images of translation for children, you have to be very careful. For example, we have a big example, very bad example, Simpson. Simpson, it's very bad, you know, cartoons for our children because they always use, you know, vulgar words, vulgar words that really affecting children, morality and morals. Huh? And we have to be very careful when you use right images for the children. Yes, we do can control the images and we can, you know, we can find, you know, a strategy using that for my country, for example, I'm talking about Kuwait, you know, kissing is not allowed, showing, you know, a lot of things, you know, hugging, kissing is not allowed. So other countries, they might allow it. So it depends on the country. But we still can control, el, 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 you know, moral code in, in images. And it's very important to be. Ah, you are from Algeria. Yeah. From, for example, we have, <laughs> you know, I was always talking about Algeria, you know, uh, because uh, you see in Algeria, uh, we, have, we have one issue that uh, Arabism issue. Uh, you see, uh, you have in Algeria, uh, all of your newspapers are French and a lot of them, a lot of you think in French. And this is unfortunate, but you have Algerians, mashallah, intellectuals and thinkers and they are good they write very good arabic good very good translation i had a friend friends from algeria and they've been telling me uh, one of the issues uh, it's arabic they, you know they have to you know have they are struggle with the arabic language and uh, i think it's about time yeah okay Malik, Malik Benna, yeah. Okay, very good. So I think it's about time Algeria, you know, uh, give more chance for Arab, you know, uh, to 
give like for example i give an example syria the only country in the arab world that teaches they teach medicine in arabic syria syrians proofreaders you know i have when i was in charge of translation department the, the best proofreaders they were from uh, you know from syria from palestine from uh, egypt from, from but from al-azhar they are very good and this one thing you know i think it's about time now for example uh, i have suggested also i suggested to my colleagues in algeria why you don't send you know uh, algerian drama but the issue is you can't put subtitles you know in, in algeria you have to put you have an issue of subtitling of using arabic subtitling because when you watch you have very nice production you have very powerfully and in tunisia they did very nice production but for us in the in the in the gulf area if you put subtitlings in arabic to understand or you can change it to arabic because of the accent i thought you know i hope you know i have answered your questions yes thank you so much any question from the audience any question from the audience Thank you so much, uh, Professor Mohammed, for very nice uh, uh, webinar. You give us many examples from uh, the translate the images by different styles from your students and different ideas by you. Also, uh, thank you for sharing uh, some of your experience. Thank you so much. It's very interesting uh, webinar. Also, I want to thank all the audience for joining us today. Uh, in YouTube and also in Zoom. I really appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, any last words before we end the session? You see, it's my pleasure that I shared my, you know, my experience. I hope I was, you know, uh, disseminating my ideas properly to you. You have got my ideas. I hope what I said will benefit education. And I think, I hope you can use that in your country that as a, as a new, a new theory, of, of teaching and learning and translation. And I thank you very much for attending this, for this, you know, speech of mine. And uh, anything you need, any kind, please contact Dr. Ahmed. I'm willing to send you any source. And my book, Media Translation, it's in, it's, it's Amazon, it's there. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, and I hope have happy, happy Ramadan, inshallah, and happy Eid in advance. Thank you so much, Professor. And inshallah, next week we will have a workshop for two days in uh, art software, art software by Dr. Nasser Hassan from Kuwait University in 29th and uh, 30th of April. Thank you so much, Professor. And thank you again for accepting my invitation. Thank you, everyone, for, uh, for joining us today in Zoom and YouTube. See you next week. Before we end, just I want to share again uh, my accounts. If you want to be with us uh, next week, I will announce the next uh, workshop and all uh, this uh, accounts. Thank you again. Thank you so much. And see you next week. Assalamu alaikum.